And then the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to connect your input. Now your input is going to be something like your uh, cable box. You know, if you have Comcast or some kind of cable company or a satellite company or uh, one of those providers, you have a, usually have a set-top box. And there's a connection panel on the back of that just like this. And the ones today typically have HDMI. But you can take the output, the video output on the back of that, and go into an input on this surround sound receiver, okay? Um, so you could choose to use an HDMI wire, go out from the set-top box into the satellite, in, I'm sorry, into the surround sound receiver, and then from the surround sound receiver, you loop out. So down here are some connections where you output to your television. Um, so one of the devices you're going to want to connect is your set-top box. So you take the output of the set-top box, go into the receiver, and then the receiver goes out to the TV, and the sound goes out to the speakers. Another device that you might want to uh, connect is you might want to connect a CD player. Now, over here on the left, these are called digital optical inputs, and right here it's labeled CD. And you want to use the correct labeled input. So if you're connecting a CD, definitely use the CD input because on the front of the surround sound receiver, when you're trying to find the CD, you want to go to where it says CD on the screen. So definitely take the time, match the device to the label of the input. Now with a CD player, uh, the best form of audio connection is going to be your digital optical audio. Uh, that's a specialized cable. You have to buy it extra. It's usually roughly around 20 bucks. You can get it cheaper maybe if you go online or maybe it's more expensive, but roughly 20 is a good number. And that's going to give you a noticeably higher quality sound compared to these old style RCAs. Now these will work. These always work. They have worked. They'll continue to work. Um, and if this is all you have, again, you could go right down to your uh, input <coughs> marked CD player, which on this particular one, it's right here, CD, red and white, and connect it right there. So for a CD player, you can use digital optical if you buy that cable, or RCA if you didn't buy it. Another connection that you might want to make, now actually before I discuss another connection, I, want to, I hope you see how simple this is. You literally hook your speakers up, right? Follow the labels. I showed you the different kinds of speaker wires. I told you about you know, what you can expect in terms of performance from the various speaker wires. So hook your speaker wires up and then start hooking your inputs up. We talked about the input for your television provider, the set-top box. That's what it's called. It's that box that just sits in the cabinet. And then we talked about a CD player. Well, you know, there might be other devices that you have. For example, you know, you might have a gaming console such as, you know, the Xbox, the PS3, or the Wii, something to that effect. Well, depending on the cable that you have for your gaming console is going to dictate what type of input you're going to use on the back here. But again, you would go down and let's say for uh, Xbox, if we were happen to be using these cheap little composite cables, which most experienced gamers know not to use that, they'll, they'll use HDMI. So we would go down here and we'd select something like, um, gosh, anything, uh, VCR. Few people are using VCRs today, so maybe the gamer would put his game on the VCR. And then on the front, of the receiver when he wanted to play a game, he'd, he'd turn the uh, input knob, and I use the word input because you're going to find that on your remote control as well, input or source, to uh, get to the game. Uh, the last device that I want to talk about is uh, maybe a Blu-ray player, right? A, a, a fairly common DVD player. Now again, I recommend you use the HDMI wire. But if you didn't happen to buy one, or it's broken, or lost, or, or used up, or whatever, you can go with component video. The quality of the video on component is going to be pretty darn comparable to this. It's not going to be superior. This is superior. But you can use component right here. Now here, again, is the thing about component. When you hook up the green, the blue, and the red for component video, that's just video. 
when you turn the TV on, you're not going to hear any audio. You still have to connect the audio. So what you would have to do in this case is green, blue, and red for video, and it's labeled DVD. And then come up here to DVD and hook up your, guess what, audio. Okay? So some of the rest of the connections on the back here, here is uh, for an FM antenna. When you buy a surround sound receiver, they generally furnish the FM antenna inside the box. It just slips on there. It's super easy to install. They generally also provide you with an AM antenna. Uh, there are some people who still listen to AM, believe it or not. It's two little wires that just clip. Hear that? Right in there, and AM is hooked up. That is super ultra easy. Uh, with this particular receiver over here on the right, it also has some switched electrical AC outlets. And a person might use this, for example, when they turn the surround sound receiver on, they might then want to have power turn on to their DVD player. So they would plug their DVD player into these switched outlets. Sometimes these outlets on the back of these receivers are switched. In other words, when you turn the receiver on, the outlet automatically energizes. And sometimes those uh, outlets are not switched. They're always energized, so they always have electricity flowing to them, whether this is powered on or powered off. Uh, in less expensive surround sound receivers, uh, to save money, they tend to, get, they tend to not furnish these. Uh, less expensive surround sound receivers aren't going to have these binding posts right here. Um, again, if you're just trying to enjoy some surround sound, I don't think that these are like a major factor. It's not like you're going to be sitting there watching the movie going, gosh, I wish I had these speaker binding posts. These clips will work. It is just a, a lesser, uh, cheaper type of connection, but it's pretty user-friendly, you know, one time and you're done kind of deal. Here's an RS-232 input. You won't ever use that. It's for a remote control. It's for high-end uh, automated systems. And those are going away with the iPad and with tablet and the software and things that have come out. Uh, this RS-232 control is going to disappear. Outside of that, that is about it. So to summarize, first hook up your speakers. I showed you how to do that. Then one by one, hook up your inputs uh, and match them to the label. And lastly, you have to connect your television to this. Okay? And in the case of this receiver, right here it says monitor out, which means out to your television. So you would just connect this cable to an input on your TV. I have some more videos up here that discuss inputs on the back of TVs. You know, please look at them. And again, at the bottom, there's a link that takes you back to the website. There's a plethora of information there if you have some other questions. And feel free to send an email if you have a question, uh, walk you through you know, some connections and things of that effect. Appreciate you coming to watch the video today. Have a great day.